and welcome to Mark Bayeski, the Academy, Pure Energy Healing Academy, warm, beautiful, ready to begin our work in seven days. So we've been working very hard all night and today, <laughs> feeling good, but tired. Um, but we're really looking forward to it. We'll, be, we'll give ourselves a couple of days prior. So we'll be uh, hopefully, um, I'm not so sure if it's possible in the next couple of days, but when Leila Sati gets here, uh, I'll do an interview so we can talk about where she's been, what she's done in Europe, uh, and Lemon House, which is uh, her amazing company. And um, yeah, interesting days. So let's talk about two crystals before we um, discuss the Pure Energy Healing Online course. Two crystals at the moment. People are asking me about uh, multiple crystals, how to wear them. Uh, I've done this before, but I don't mind uh, talking about it again. Um, how many crystals can you wear or should you wear and do they interfere with each other? So it's a great question. I always like to tackle this in so many different ways, but the simplest way to talk about crystals is this. At the moment I'm wearing, um, I call them donuts. They're, um, they're beautiful. I, I cherry pick these out. They're incredible, incredible energy donuts. Three different, completely different energetic frequencies, three, diff three different blasting energy um, waves into my body at any given moment and around me, that, which affect people. Also, two right now of, I would say, my favorite crystals right now, apart from let's just keep um, Tektite and Moldavite out of it but just now as crystals that I'm working with and, and trying to understand more and more every day. So you all know the famous uh, Moldavite and Brazilian quartz pointer. That is incredible. And then we have this fairly new to me, um, only months, I would say. So I'm not an expert on this Libyan desert. I've never handled it before up until three, four, five, six months ago, something like that. However, it's been on me nearly every day. Um, underneath it is a uh, tech type from Cambodia. So these two crystals, these two matching pairs are on me, as you can see, and also three different crystals. Why do I wear so many crystals? Well, I guess the easiest way to say it is, as a crystal healer, when I began the healing work and I was getting into crystals, I put my first crystal over my neck and started wearing it as um, not only a protector, but a cleanser, clearer, and something to make me feel better. And if I'm right in thinking, it was something, my first crystals were very, very beautiful to look at. So I would have probably had an exquisite piece of moonstone around my neck. Um, Labradorite, Labradorite would be around my neck as well. Um, and that would look phenomenal. Um, other crystals that I used to wear, turquoise, um, citrine, amethyst was a, a must. And that was right at the very beginning when I'm getting to understand crystals. So I'm wearing crystals and I'm doing psychic reads. And predominantly after a psychic read, I would then give a healing session. That was standard. Some people didn't want a session, a healing session. So that would be no problem. But most of the time after I began the work, people would uh, really, really would like a healing session. It really made them feel good. So. It would be a, a psychic read, then a healing session. That was what happened to me at the very end of my work. It would always be a psychic read and a healing session, a future read. So at the beginning, I had one crystal, which probably was something like a moonstone that day or that day uh, or the following day, uh, a turquoise or a following day, an amethyst. So I'd always have one crystal on. And then came a day when I was doing the healing session where I had about six or seven crystals on my reading desk. And for some reason I turned around and felt that I needed to put one on this lady's either chest or 
third eye, somewhere around there. And it didn't feel like the one on my on my chest hanging from me. So I just turned and put it on probably a heart or a third eye. And then I found myself holding the moonstone and placing my hand over the crystal, over a heart or third eye, it may have been moved back and forth. And after the session, it was it was quite clear that the client said they were they, they've never seen anything and felt anything quite the same as as this. So it made me realise that there's something in crystals at the very beginning. And I thought, okay, and I wrote it down. There was nine months of me writing everything down, and um, one of the the things that I noticed most of all is the colours, the colours that they used to see. Um, also that they could see faces and sometimes faces of their family and so on. But what was so overwhelming to me was the tears and the explanation. And I, I found that most people found a lack of speech because I believe our dictionary limits us and they couldn't find the words in what they saw and felt. So I got used to that. And I, get used, I got used to the feeling of people feeling something that they couldn't explain. So I remember after those days went by, I'd find myself thinking, and it was, it was purely organic really. I'd have maybe some crystals and a, uh, over there. And instead of walking over to the desk and going back, it made more sense to wear them and then to be able to quickly take them off and put them onto my client without moving too much, moving my feet or making any sound going elsewhere and maybe knocking down, dropping something. So then I had two crystals, one specifically for my client and one for me that I would hold. And then as the days, weeks went by, I found myself wearing three and four and five crystals and sometimes six and seven. And people used to see me saying, my God, you're a walking crystal star. And uh, that was in the village and I'd say, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and knowing that these were my tools that I would use on my clients. So the question begs, is, is there a certain amount of crystals that you would say you shouldn't wear because it interferes with one another? All I can relate to you is my experience as a crystal healer. And that is when I wore those crystals, I felt the benefit from all of them. And I felt my body being uh, energized, being blasted. And what I did notice most of all is that whenever I took one off and then put another one on, I could feel a different sensation in the body. But also the crystal that I was wearing, I was still getting the same, um, let's say, uh, difficult to put into words, but let's say that my stomach was, um, very sensitive to the healing work uh, because of the negative energy that used to uh, be released from my client and it would enter the front of my stomach and go to my back and sit on my back so if I wore a certain crystal like um, at the time I didn't really know right at the beginning uh, something called tectite but I did know black tourmaline and that would work tremendously so I'd wear black tourmaline and it would help and I'd feel that my balanced body would be shifting and clearing um, before I had um, the incense sticks to cleanse and clear, that would help. And I always noticed that whenever I finished a day's work, if I didn't wear the black um, tourmaline from Africa, I felt oof, a little bit of pain and I have to spend more time either in the bath with, a sea, with sea salt or by my tree to cleanse and clear myself. So I realized that when it was on, it was having great effect on a positive way to cleanse and clear my energy and to protect me. But yet I'd also have my moonstone on, which would be really beneficial to my psychic reads that people would say, wow, how did you know that? That is incredible. I can't believe you tuned in on that. So when I was wearing the moonstone, I'd get at that point, I was getting a lot of great information and then I'd wear um, uh, an amethyst at the same time. And then I'd feel uh, like I can feel somebody in spirit coming forward now, standing next to you. She's got massive red hair. 
and she's got like uh, big boobs and Ligaya be crying saying that's my wife that's what she looked like and I'm saying well she's here now and she loves you and I can feel a love for you and like the guy be a big bloke from Austria crying his eyes out saying tell her I love her I said you don't need to she already she can hear you already so you don't I don't you don't need to tell me you just tell her she's here and she's always with you so how how that happened was I realized that when people used to say to me, especially a lot of um, crystal healers, oh, you shouldn't wear too many crystals or they'll interfere with each other. I'd be bewildered by it. And I'd be like, well, I'm sorry, but I just don't get what you're saying. Because the more crystals I wear, the more they, they target certain, uh, certain parts of me, you know, my psychic ability for the amethyst, you know, the, the uh, uh, as in the connection to the spirit world, and my moonstone would give me the insight, foresight uh, for my attunement. And uh, black tourmaline would protect me and feel that protection and so on. And then I was introduced to Moldavite, uh, which then took me to another level. And then I was interest, uh, introduced to Tektite, um, the black Tektite, which then just absolutely made a massive impact in my life. And I found myself not being uh, affected at all by negative energy because tectite absorbs negative energy. Black tourmaline was definitely helping tremendously, but black tectite from uh, places like Thailand, Cambodia, um, you know, black tectite, that is an absorber of negative energy, energy extremely powerful. And then I went on to Moldavite, and you've all you all know the story about Moldavite. This is a Moldavite, and it's it's ridiculous now at the moment. It's that it trade right now to buy Moldavite. One one little gram is anywhere between thirty and forty pounds now. Pounds, not euros. Pounds. <laughs> it's incredible it's just it's a, you can't even imagine it but then you know uh, like I've got a, a Moldavite collection um, which is one of the most beautiful Moldavite collections in the world on my website and those prices now don't seem half as expensive as they did when I first got them so it's kind of like interesting but yeah Moldavite it took me to another level and when I was working on clients with Moldavite the hits I were getting the, the amount of um, phenomena of an extraterrestrial energy and um, experience was just phenomenal I actually got excited when I was placing Moldavite on third eyes or you know guys who have no belief in this just just I was like come on come on then let's get going come on and then afterwards like you know not always but you know most of the time it will be like yeah no words you can't even say you don't even need to say anything just give them a cuddle they've gone and then you know I think the way I um, measured the success of, of Moldavite was the amount of people who came back from that one client so that one guy who would come to me would tell 10 or 20 people so it would be you know I, I had a good life really when I was a healer because I didn't really have to wait for clients and I didn't have to feel nervous thinking will I get any clients it was just uh, it was that kind of thing which was so normal for me in a day that my phone would ring all the time and people and it wasn't egoistic I felt happy about it I'm thinking I must be doing something right but all the while it was like every day was an experiment to me every day was a new day of learning something new about this world that most people out there don't even want to talk about ridicule mock belittle call you know there's so many names for, for my work you know and and uh, damn right slander as well and I just think to myself if they would just if they would have just sat with me for a week or two weeks they, they, they wouldn't be able to deny that there's so much that we know we know nothing about in this world and eventually we'll come to the point in 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 my humble opinion that it'll go full circle and that we'll get to the understanding of what we do as actual truth and fact 
So science is so far behind that one day it will catch up and realize that everything is energy and all that we do is uh, actually very normal and very easy to do and yet we mock and ridicule it. But you know the one thing that, that worries me about the whole of the world is that I believe wholeheartedly and I always have done that the technology that we hold and the technology that is created every day and, and created more and more and become more sophisticated is that what's going to probably kill the world one day. And I often connect with uh, Moldavite and hear that message quite often. So our downfall of uh, the human species, the race uh, for this, this, this basically this spacesuit it's going to self-destruct because of technology. That's That's been the message. That's what I'm writing in the book called The Power of Moldavite. And it's a, a huge chapter because every time I attune to Moldavite, there's a message as an extraterrestrial message saying that we are uh, about to destroy ourselves because of technology. And um, it, it's, it's something that is always kind of like, well, if that's the case, then it's meant to be. But fear not, because you are not the space suit. You are not the body. You are your children are not the body. The spirit within you is that what uh, extraterrestrial is to them, which is a space suit of a different nature. So we come and go out of different space suits. So we could be furry animals. We could be creatures. We could be from different uh, corners of the cosmos. But we come and go, so we never die. But the space suit will eventually because of modern technology and the darkness that resides in a lot of psychopaths and um, people in this world that do things which they thought was a good thing, but then realize that it's ended up being a hugely bad thing and then it's too late. But that's me just going off on one. So today's... Um, Final ending on uh, my two favorite crystals uh, to work with as a pendant, as a healer right now, is this beauty, which is a beautiful, genuine piece of Moldavite, probably about uh, a gram and a half there, with a most beautiful, a lot of people say, oh, it's cracked. It's not cracked. That is exactly what it looks like when you have a beautiful, polished piece of Brazilian quartz, which is fabulous to connect with. It's as, as powerful as any other crystal that I've worked with uh, when it comes to a tuning, like um, pink moonstone or rainbow moonstone. It's equally as beautiful and powerful, and you can use this as a wand of cleansing, clearing, and, you know, just trying to cleanse away and clear away any kind of uh, physical to the body, strengthening the eyes, uh, uh, throat chakra. You can use it in so many ways. You can hold it here and work with it this way. So then you're tuning into the Moldavite when it's on your finger and you can pick up so much when you go still and you do the work. And within one hour of working like this around the body, in total silence with just a bit of music, working on your client, oh my God, or working on yourself, you get so much information coming in because you are vibrating at a level that is uh, beyond this this rigid and dense energy that we walk around in. But as soon as you start the healing work, you then shift your energy and vibration and it's phenomenal how you can connect to the extraterrestrial um, flow that comes in from the universe. So it's, it's fascinating. And um, lastly, the Moldavite and Libyan Desert Glass. At this moment in time, I wear it. Like I said, I've been wearing it from when I was asked to start to wear it. Please, Mark, give it a go. I've got to say, I'm becoming more and more hooked on this. And like I say, I'm wearing it now. Nearly every day, I nearly wear it. And um, I'm doing some great work at the moment as I'm channeling two, three books at the moment, but two specifically and it's working so well. I am getting floods of information coming in, which is a pass. So 
Uh, I, I don't know if I talked about this before. You should try it though. Definitely give it a go. Go and buy some. I've got uh, these are prototypes, so I don't have that many. I might have had a couple of hundred made, but they go very quickly. And I've just got some on my desk there that I'm working on. So let me tell you, Libyan Desert Glass with Tektai. Try it. Channel because you'll be surprised how your memory of your past and connection to what you've learned, to what the universe is trying to give you, is pretty powerful. And that's why if you're writing books, if you wanna create, if you wanna do something which ends up positive and powerful, then give it a try, give it a go. Fabulous crystal. So uh, that's it for today. For today, um, just want to leave you on one final note, which is um, uh, a kind of tribute to a very dear uh, sister that I never had. Um, she was also like a mum to me, um, but more like a sister. Um, when my mum died, and in fact, yeah, I wrote this letter today to uh, the, the niece uh, of this lovely lady that uh, I remember waking up in the morning and my mum says, oh, there's there's um, uh, your, your, your brother's girlfriend's upstairs. Um, and I'm like, okay, I open the door and she's there with a big smile on her face. And she says, oh, you're Mark. I said, I am. And uh, there it began a great relationship of love and kindness. And then um, my mum passed away shortly after that and then she took over without even realizing she was so kind to me. Um, and what happened there, um, my brother moved in with his girlfriend, this is his lovely girl, and um, I used to go and visit them all the time. Um, in fact, I was there most nights and they opened their door to me as if it was just another normal night and they were so kind and caring, both of them. But yeah, her name was Leslie, Leslie Reed. And she's from Huddersfield, she was from Huddersfield. And uh, Leslie, yeah, she, there, were, there, were, there were moments of my life where I was so destroyed, not just about my mum dying, but also being bullied at school, tremendously bullied by one particular boy that I've talked to you about before. And there were days that I just couldn't go into school. My heart was so tired and broken. And I'd knock on the door nervously, hoping that she'd let me in and she opened the door. And yeah, it was just kindness of um, having a somewhere to go. And I should have been at school, but you know, I couldn't face the bullying another day. And they were and and she she'd understand completely. She was a beautiful, beautiful soul. If anybody knew her, you, you could comment below and just say, because Leslie Reed passed away a few days ago and I didn't know uh, when, what happened with me is as I got older, we became great friends. We actually, um, after the, the parting of my brother and uh, Leslie, which was very traumatic and sad for all of us, um, these things happen. Um, she ended up being my friend still, and still being friends with my brother, of course, but um, uh, there were one point where she had nowhere to live and she needed somewhere in between, and she stayed with me in a little flat, and we went out, and we, we had such good nights out together. We were like brother, and we were literally brothers and sisters. And then she ran uh, my shops that I had in the UK. Um, I had various shops, Libra Furnishings, um, lots of different shops. She'd, she'd always be there running them, helping me as the manageress. Um, and yeah, we all. she was always there through the difficult times when I went on a, a TV show, show called Blind Day and I was mocked and ridiculed. She'd always stand up for me and always be there for me. So she was great. Um, and then there was the moment when I couldn't be in the UK anymore. Like I just couldn't cope. I had to leave and something was pulling me away. And that was a, a sad moment that we had to say goodbye. And um, I just left everything behind. And one of the things I never did was, uh, I tried to contact her a few times when I went back to England. I went to a place called Brighouse because I knew she worked somewhere in Brighouse but could never find the shop. But yeah, it was like, it was just one of those things that 
you know I heard a couple of days you know I just heard now that she passed a couple of days ago and it was like you know life's too short guys if you if you've fallen out with somebody and you wish to reconnect with them just do it or else you'll regret it but now I will today tonight I will close my eyes and reconnect to her in spirit and talk to her and let's see if I can get in touch so yeah that's my tribute to a most amazing earth angel left behind a beautiful family uh, nieces nephews sister who loved us so much and she she's loved she's loved by so many people so that's my tribute to um leslie reed a dear friend and an earth angel who looked after me when i needed her the most and she was there with an open door and open arms so she's loved by so many all right guys wishing you a lovely day i'm going to get back to work now and start to upload some libyan desert beautiful prototypes with tektite underneath give them a try i'll put a link below i hope you enjoy them they're beautiful and i might even link this one below too yeah i'll link both crystal below enjoy pretty powerful